How Kai Havertz will fit in at Arsenal. Mikel Arteta has moved in the market and signed Kai Havertz for £65 million from Chelsea. Today we're going to take a little bit of a look at the move, the tactics, the formation, the player role that he could play within Mikel Arteta's 4-3-3. It's a really interesting move because when I watch Kai Havertz at Bayer Leverkusen, one of the best young players in the world. The way he moved off the ball and finished was Pretty outstanding. But I think he's under-delivered in the Premier League so far. He's missed a lot of big chances and it's something he really needs to work on with Mikel Arteta to be a success. So from a basic perspective, Kai Havertz can play all across the forward line. Can play as a number nine, can play wide right, can play attacking midfield off a striker, but also can do a job on the left wing. But for me, the best Kai Havertz is a player that has a striker ahead of him. A player that he can move off in and around the box. His biggest strength, as we mentioned before, is off the ball movement. It's finding that little pocket of space and then having the composure on his left foot to put the ball in the back of the net. It's been a really tough season for Chelsea and a tough season for Kai Havertz. When we look at the numbers, Kai Havertz has been Chelsea's best player in the Premier League. And that isn't really saying much because Chelsea, of course, finished the season in 12th position. Really, really disappointing. One of their problems was putting the ball in the back of the net. They only scored 38 goals in 38 games. And a lot of that was down to the supply as well as the finishing. We're going to take a look at Kai Havertz and his profile from a statistical perspective. I think when you look at him as a player, it is that kind of space, that ability to adapt. Only seven goals from an expected goals of 11.6, really underperformed. But for Chelsea, from a statistical perspective, he finished the season in the Premier League with the most goals, most shots on target, most chances created, most aerial duels won, most possession won in the final third, most final third passes, most duels won, most layoffs and most flick-ons. Pretty decent statistics, but performing at a pretty poor level. Chelsea traditionally have killed strikers. We're looking at the likes of Abemiang, Murata, Igwe, Wain, Pato, Kesman, Lukaku, Falcao, Adrian Mewtwo, even the great Chris Sutton couldn't get it going at Chelsea. And of course, the best example, Ballon d'Or winner Andrei Shevchenko. Chelsea uh, have a problem with getting a centre forward in. And I think the big thing with Kai Havertz is, quite frankly, for me, he's not a centre forward. I think we've seen enough of him in the Premier League in that position to look at his profile and think it's not quite good enough. I think one of the big things with Kai Havertz is receiving the ball with the back to goal. I think that's not getting the best out of his skill set. It's moving off the ball. It's getting into those goal-scoring positions and having the calmness and composure. You know, some of the best football that he's played in Germany was when he was playing either on the right wing or in a central midfield or an attacking midfield position. And in fact, if you look at the statistics for Kai Havertz in the Premier League, he's played 47 times as a number nine, 32 times in attacking midfield, only made seven appearances on the right wing. I think one of the reasons why I quite like this signing of Kai Havertz is it gives Arsenal great depth. You know, Havertz could easily play the Odegaard role. He could also play a different role to Saka, maybe more as a goal scorer from the right-hand side versus Saka's you know, duality of scoring and assisting. It would just slightly change the makeup of the attack. We'll have a look from a, a tactical perspective uh, of why I think that'd be quite good. And if you look at the statistics, in 65 games in the Bundesliga as an attacking midfielder, 15 goals and 15 assists. But actually from the right wing is where he was most deadly. 27 Bundesliga games and, of course, 13 goals and 7 assists assists. We look in comparison to only his, what was it, seven starts on the right wing for Chelsea. You start to look at him and maybe they profiled him wrong but also you've got to look at the change in managers you've got to look at the uncertainty with the ownership as well. It's been an interesting spell but also you look at Kai Havertz and actually the, the biggest impact of his career a winning goal in the Champions League final and that's something that we can't ignore. You know that is a career defining moment for a number of players. And I think when you, you you know you break Chelsea down and you look at what they have been over the last few years, it has been kind of this counter-attacking team that looked good in stages under Thomas Tuchel, but arguably didn't create enough chances. Kyle has taken that chance in the final against Manchester City, a fantastic goal after rounding Edison and putting the ball in the back of the net. Created a big chance in that game as well. Could have come away with a goal and an assist in that match. And that's the levels we're getting at. And I think one of the big things we have to remember is Kyle Havertz is only 24 years old. There's still a lot of football for him to play. Hence why Arsenal have signed him on for a reasonably long deal. I think Marcus Rashford's basically hit his prime at 25. That's where you'd like to see Kai Havertz develop. Talking about development, let's take a little bit more of a look at as goal scorer and have a look at you know, where he puts the ball in the back of the net. Because I think there's some weaknesses in his game that Mikel Arteta really needs to work on. I think when we're breaking down kind of 
the expected goals and the big chances missed this season, it isn't great. You know, 14 big chances missed, uh, scoring seven goals from an expected goals of 11.6, massively underperforming those metrics. When you actually break it down a little bit more, I think since in the last five seasons, he's actually overperformed his expected goals with his left foot, but with his head and with his right foot, he's massively underperformed. Slightly underperformed with scoring uh, 0.92, less goals with his head than he should have done, but his right foot is where you really start to see a bit of an issue where he scored five goals less than he should have done by expected goals and that's a big big thing that Mikel Arteta needs to improve when you're actually looking at the the breakdown of where Kai Havertz scores his goals he scores far more goals in the left hand side of the box than in the right hand side of the box which is a little bit unexpected because you know naturally the more traditional left-footed attackers in European football your Messi's that obviously scores from everywhere but you know the classic Messi goal cut inside score with his left foot where in fact Kai Havertz is actually better going naturally to the left-hand side and then cutting the ball across. So a big part of his development under Mikel Arteta has got to be that ability to finish with his left foot or with his right foot on the right-hand side of the box to improve that goal scoring. You look at the statistics, he scored 74 goals in the last five seasons. Of course, four of those have come from outside of the box. When you actually look at the left-hand side versus the right-hand side of the box, there's 46 goals from the left-hand side and only 23 from the right-hand side. He is far more composed finishing from that position and that again was something that Marcus Rashford has improved this season. Rashford's goals are really now well balanced in the penalty area where previously he scored a load of goals from cutting in onto his right foot from the left-hand side of the box. This types of things are stuff that really needs to improve under Mikel Arteta. I think there's a player there. I think there's a player that could really fit this system. We're actually going to go back to a game in 2019 and have a look at some tactical analysis to see where Havertz could fit into this Arsenal team. You know we love to do the analysis. We're going to Leverkusen, their game against Dusseldorf, because I think this goal really highlights what Kai Havertz is going to bring to Arsenal. So we had a bit of an attack from Leverkusen. It was a centre half carrying the ball out. They broke down. Kai Havertz got back really well in the transition, and picked up the ball in the centre circle. For me, Kai Havertz isn't that player that's going to distribute the ball, that's going to get on the ball, that's going to command the tempo. He's a player that gives it simple, that links the play in between the lines. A little bit like the role that Granit Xhaka had at Arsenal. Arsenal last season. So we moved the play on, Kai Havertz plays a very simple pass back to the centre half. What I want you to focus on though is the off the ball movement. The ball gets played from centre half into the feet of Julian Brandt, really lovely open uh, turn from Julian Brandt to get Leverkusen into the final third. This is something that we've seen at Arsenal time and time again, this structure. Two wingers, Martinelli top of the screen, Saka bottom of the screen, Odegaard being Julian Brandt, uh, Xhaka being Kai Havertz and of course Gabriel Jesus dropping off the line same tactical setup as Leverkusen in this game. This was a 4-3-3 from Leverkusen and I really like Kai Havertz in this position. The movement off the ball, absolutely superb and this is what I believe that Mikel Arteta is going to work with really, really well. Is attacking the left-hand side of the box. As I mentioned before, Kai Havertz is deadly in that position versus the right-hand side of the box. So as the play's worked into the centre-forward, the ball's worked out to the right-hand side. Kevin Voland in a position. Again, a left-footed right attacker. So when we look at the kind of the, the best thing with Kai Havertz, he's a randoiter, he's a space investigator, he's very much like Thomas Muller. He has that ability to find space in the penalty area. We can already see from this clip that he's looking to get in between the opposition's fullback and centre-half and attack that space, that channel, that left side of the box that Granit Xhaka would attack for Arsenal under Mikel Arteta last season. As the balls work wide, you know you know what the, the, the attacker's going to do, you know that Vol Voland's going to cut inside onto that left foot and cross the ball into the box. We can see now Kai Havertz is going to run off the defensive midfielder and he's going to attack the space that's opened up even more between the fullback and the centre-back. And he does this really, really well. Attacks the penalty spot, then attacks the uh, centre of the, the six-yard box. Great ball in from, of course, Kevin Voland. He finishes off the move with his left foot. This is something that we could see Saka do. Saka receiving wide and Kai Havertz moving off the ball. That was the Granit Xhaka role this season. Get into the penalty area when Saka or Ben White or Odegaard are in crossing positions. And this is why I believe this signing actually could work out really, really well for Arsenal if they can work on the finishing and, of course, the creativity with Kai Havertz. I think that's a few things that he needs to improve. So breaking that down from a tactical perspective, we know that Arsenal's biggest strengths last season came from their right-hand triangle. That was the creative side, Odegaard, Saka and Ben White. 
Whereas the left-hand side of the pitch, Martinelli and Kai Havertz, or previously, of course, Granit Xhaka, was the goal-scoring side of the pitch. We had more creativity coming down the right-hand side, more goal-scoring down the left. But I think the big thing when, when putting bodies into the box, of course, the first attacker will be Gabriel Jesus. What you want is Kai Havertz to be attacking the left-hand side when the ball's on the right, when Saka can, you know, jink, can beat his man and then get crosses into the box. That's what you want from Kai Havertz. For me, Arsenal don't have a Haaland. I don't think that's the way Mikel Arteta has built the team. You know, they've got Martinelli on 15 Premier League goals, got Odegaard on 15 Premier League goals. The goals are very much uh, spread across the forward line. I think that is why Kai Havertz could be a really good option. It's adding more goals that's not going to be the centre forward. Again, Gabriel Jesus is something that you're going to build towards, scoring more goals in the Premier League. But what he's best at is creating something out of nothing on the dribble and pressing the opponents, but also linking the play. And that's another side that Arsenal are going to get. Not only is it goal scoring, but also it's the link play. You know, one thing I mentioned before, Kai Havertz is quite a, a simple player in possession that could be very much used to progress the play. You know, moving into the advanced areas, dropping it into his feet and then laying the ball off. The stat we mentioned before, most layoffs for Chelsea in the Premier League this season. It's really important to have these link players in your team. You know, you don't want everyone to want to drop on the ball, get on the ball, pick it up in deep areas. Odegaard already does that. So Arsenal do in fact need a player to go the other way in Kai Havertz. I think another area of development for Kai Havertz, again, 24 years old, loads of development left, is assisting. I was quite disappointed looking at his assisting numbers in the Premier League. You know, if he wants to look up to someone like Thomas Muller, those numbers need to jump up. You know, think of Thomas Muller back end of the season. It assists galore. You know, he's breaking the assist records in Europe. He's, he's rocking with 20 goals that he's assisted. And I think that's a, a player model that you really look at when you look at Kai Havertz. Um, you know, as Thomas Muller, who take it back, you know, let's say two seasons, 18 goals and 11 assists. Again, Muller started off as a goal scorer. You know, go back to the, the early days under a, you know, uh, Lou Van Gaal in the 14-15 season, 13 goals, 10 assists. You know, that's the numbers that you want to get from someone like Kai Havertz. And I feel that's an area of his game that he really needs to improve. You know, take a look at last season, only a single assist. The season before in the Premier League as well, slightly disappointing with only three assists. I really believe he's got the eye for that last line pass. He is a last line player. What I mean there is that when the ball has been, you know, worked to, you know, worked to the final third and Arsenal have uh, sort of camped out in, in, you know, with their attacking five shape, great width. But having someone like Zinchenko invert, into that inside position. What I mean with Kai Havertz being a last line player, not only do you want to play the through balls for him to finish himself, but you also want him to make those runs in behind the defence and be found by someone like a Zinchenko or by a Declan Rice, let's say. You want him to find that move, pull wide, and then cut the ball back uh, for either you know Gabriel Jesus making the run forward or Odegaard on the cutback. That's something I feel like he has to develop in his game. I think there is a great player there. He has flattered to deceive so far, but I think this is a calculated gamble from Edu, from Mikel Arteta. You look at some of the signings recently have been absolutely brilliant. You know, the likes of Ben White being brought in, Gabriel Jesus, Zinchenko. So I'd actually back this transfer and it kind of makes sense from a tactical perspective. Look at his shot map for him being so left-sided in terms of where he finishes well. You know, a stat we mentioned before, scored twice as many goals in the last five seasons in the left-hand side of the box, in the right-hand side of the box. The composure's there. There is a player to work with and quite frankly, does the hardest thing in football the best in terms of moving off the ball and finding space. He is not a fixed striker. He could play that role for Arsenal. But for me, is that second line movement, that second attacker into the box is where you want Kai Havertz. I want him to succeed. Big fan of the Bundesliga. There's a few players that have let me down, but I think Kai Havertz to Arsenal could in fact be a good bit of business. A little too expensive. I wouldn't have spent £65 million on Kai Havertz, but I like the player profile. Mikel Arteta has done wonders with players from a coaching perspective. He's an upgrade from an attacking sense than Grant Xhaka in this eight role. Can't wait to see you next season. Arsenal fans, get in the comments below. Do you think Kai Havertz will be a success and how do you think he'll fit in at Arsenal? I think from an overview, you know, him being the attacking midfielder and maybe Odegaard playing slightly deeper would probably be the place to go. Obviously, he can play in multiple roles across the line. We'll see him in all positions, but I do think it'll be a success. <sighs> Hopefully. I really want Kai to succeed in the Premier League.